and welcome to another video on vectors and parametric equations. Today we are going to be looking at applications for parametric equations. So we're really going to delve deeply into one example today. And we're going to think about how we could conceptualize this using techniques that we learned in Algebra 1 and Algebra 2. And then we're going to think about how we could conceptualize the same scenario using parametric equations. So the scenario is basically Kyle is on the roof of his garage, which is 15 meters off the ground. And he launches a potato out of his newly constructed potato gun. The initial velocity is 50 meters per second, so this must be quite the powerful potato gun. And the angle of elevation at which he's holding the gun is uh, 40 degrees with the horizontal here. So if we're thinking about our coordinate system, uh, how about we make the coordinates, the origin, maybe uh, on the ground directly underneath Kyle, because we're probably going to want to find out some information like how long it takes the potato to hit the ground, and the horizontal distance that the potato travels in the air before it hits the ground, and things like that. So that would be a good choice for our, for our origin. So let's the, the first thing let's think about is this initial velocity vector. So if I just want to do a quick sketch here, so this initial velocity vector, uh, this v sub zero, it said that the initial velocity was 50 meters per second, shot at a 40 degree angle with the horizontal, but the angle of elevation was 40 degrees. So we need to figure out what the initial velocity is in the x direction and the initial velocity in the y direction. So we could do some basic trigonometry here, basic right triangle trig. We want to figure out the initial x direction velocity and we want to figure out the initial y direction velocity. So we could write an equation here like uh, sine of 40 equals v y naught uh, over 50, multiply both sides by 50. So we're going to get that vy naught is 50 sine of 40 degrees uh, meters per second. And vx naught, the initial velocity in the x direction, will be 50 cosine of 40 uh, meters per second. So we can see here that in doing some of these word problems, we're going to need our knowledge of vectors, and we're going to have to you know, be taking vectors and looking at what the component form of the vectors and you know we might have some situations where we have some vectors and we gotta add them together and find some resultant vectors and so our knowledge of vectors is going to be sort of sort of crucial here and then I have the the computation over here on the calculator um, you know just make sure that you're given this angle in degrees so make sure you're in uh, that your mode is in degrees when you're computing the initial velocity in the x direction and the y direction so, uh, I've sort of defined my variables here. We'll let t equal time. I'm going to let x equal the horizontal distance in meters and y equal the height in meters. And sort of I've come up with some equations here to model height first time and horizontal distance first time. Let's look at the horizontal distance first. So how far is the potato traveling in the horizontal distance? Well, this depends on the x naught being like how far horizontally did I uh, were we standing with the potato gun from the origin. But if we're thinking of Kyle standing on his garage and the origin's on the ground directly below him, that x naught will just be will just be zero. Then plus v x naught t, uh, that's because the speed at which the potato is moving in the horizontal direction times the time that it is moving, that's going to give us the distance that the potato travels horizontally. So that is going to be 50 cosine of 40 times t. So there's an equation for the, the horizontal distance that the potato travels. I've got my window here on my calculator. Uh, I don't know why I went from 3 to 8. I probably should resize that and go from from 0 to 8, but we can see that this is going to be a line, uh, and the slope of the line is 50 cosine of 40, is the, is the initial speed in the x direction, 
And so, so notice here, as time goes on, the potato is moving horizontally, but, but th this line goes out to infinity in both directions, in the time direction and in the horizontal distance direction. Uh, the, the choice of variables here might be slightly confusing because this axis is actually the x-axis. Now on this axis is the t-axis. Since I'm using time is my uh, independent variable and the horizontal distance traveled is my dependent variable. So that's slightly confusing here, but but clearly this situation, like time's not going to go out to infinity, the horizontal distance isn't going to go out to infinity, because eventually the potato's going to hit the ground and then the model ceases to, 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 to be useful. So this is, this model's useful, you know, from when the potato comes out of the gun until it, it hits the ground, and we're ignoring things like, you know, drag and air resistance on the potato and stuff like that. This is kind of like an idealized uh, situation. So over here on the left, I've got the height first time graph. So I've got uh, time as my independent variable here, and height is the dependent variable. And I can see that over time, uh, what the height of the potato is. So we should notice that it, at time zero, that height should be uh, 15 because the uh, Kyle is standing on his garage, which is 15 meters tall, and we're saying that the origin is directly below him on the ground, so so why not? The initial height is going to be 15, uh, plus v y not t is going to be 50 sine of 40 times t. Now, that would be the equation for the height of the potato versus time if, if gravity didn't exist. Like if I shot this potato, it, it would keep rising vertically and, and what what would govern the height here? Well fifteen is, is how is how many meters it's Kyle was standing off the off of the origin, off of the ground. Right? And then fifteen sine forty is the speed at which the potato is moving vertically right when it is launched out of the gun. So if I multiply that by the time that the potato is moving, like it's, the potato is going to get higher and higher and higher. So, like without gravity, that would just the potato would just keep going, keep rising. But we know that like eventually, like gravity wins here. The potato is going to eventually come back down and hit the ground. Like as soon as the potato is launched out of the gun, that initial velocity of 50 sine 40, that's going to start uh, decaying over time because gravity is like constantly pulling. Uh, the the potato down so so that's where this one half at squared comes in uh, so that's going to be plus one half the and then the acceleration due to gravity which will be negative nine point eight meters per second squared uh, negative because I'm I'm defining up to be my positive direction here so gravity is going to be working uh, against the potato here down uh, negative one half times or one half times negative nine point eight times t squared. So there's my function that models the height versus time. Notice this graph is not the path of the potato. This is just the height of the potato at any given time. So at time zero, potato's 15 meters off the ground. At 3.28 seconds, the potato is 67.701 meters off the ground. That uh, The 67.701 meters, that is the maximum height of the potato here, and then at 6.997 seconds, the potato is zero meters off the ground. I'm at 6.997 seconds, that's when the potato hits the ground. So notice over here, so I took that time, like when the potato hits the ground, that's 6.997 seconds. I used that time to figure out horizontally how far the potato went. Because after the 6.997 seconds, like once the potato hits the ground, it's going to, it's going to splat. Like that's then our models are ceasing to be useful. The potato is all done after that. So I used my time of 6.997 seconds here and got that the potato traveled horizontally 268.001 meters before it hit the ground. I mean, this must be one ridiculous potato gun because 268 meters, that's, that's really, really, really far to be launching a potato. So I'm, I'm starting to, to question how, how realistic I made this situation. I'm going to have to... Uh, 
maybe look at some YouTube videos of potato guns to see if, if this is at all feasible, like if 50 meters per second is a, a velocity that we could actually be launching a potato, if we could actually achieve uh, 268 meters here. Not, not sure how realistic this is. So now let's think about this situation uh, as a parametric equation. So here's my parametric, here's my parametric model. T is going to be my parameter. So here's my function for x, the horizontal distance, x naught plus v, x naught t. And here's the, the equation for my height. Boom, I can just combine these together and make a parametric model. So uh, check out what I'm going to do to put the calculator in parametric mode. When I went into mode, then I put the function in parametric mode here. So this will allow me to type uh, the equation for x and y in for my function. I should have put a screen here, I apologize, uh, for the parametric model. But if you just hit y equals, once you're in parametric mode, you can type in your equations. You'll notice you, the, the parameter even comes up as t when you type it in the calculator. And check out the window here. I've got I've got this new option in my window when I'm in parametric mode that I have to I have to set the min and max value for the parameter. So this is where you've got to play around a little bit. Like 0 to 8, I mean I kind of knew already from thinking about the problem before that the the potato is only going to stay in there for for maybe, you know, about 7 seconds. So so I kind of knew what to make uh, t min and t max here, but you might, so you might have to play around with that. Now the t step, you want the t step to be really small, because what that's going to do is that if every time t increases by 0.1, the calculator is going to evaluate x and y, get a point, plot that point on the function. So the smaller the t step is, the more points the calculator plots, sort of the more accurate the graph is going to look. If you're using something like Wolfram Alpha, something like that, that'll make the t-step really, really small, pretty much by, by default to get really accurate graphs. And then now thinking about this, I've got uh, my x-axis here, y-axis here, so I've got horizontal distance on the x-axis, vertical distance on the y-axis. So now this, what we're seeing here, that's actually the path of the potato. So the, the awesome thing here with parametric equations is that you can use the trace feature now on the calculator and as you trace on the calculator, you'll get various time values. And then for each of those time values, you will get the horizontal distance and the vertical uh, distance uh, from the origin for the potato. So that's really awesome. So that sort of combines those two scenarios sort of into one, into one model here. So parametric equations are really useful for, for, modeling, for modeling situations. So I hope that helps. Hope that's a good sort of introduction to, to you know, taking a situation that we knew a lot about from Algebra 2 and thinking about sort of how we could set this up using uh, parametric mode on the calculator. Good luck.